everybody, Karen here with Angela Overkill Hill, and you are listening to What Happened Was, and you're watching it too. You know, I realized, Angela, last week at the end of the show, I was maybe a little bit harsh to our <laughs> audio fans, oh, and I was no. all about the video, so I wanted to make sure today that I showed my respect and my gratitude for the audio fans. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. But you know what the audio audio fans are missing out on? That nice cleavage you got showing oh, today. Hey. Oh. <laughs> What's up? I had to do hey. it. Was. Hey, girls. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about you? You're like, you got the shoulder. You're like, oh, you yeah. We this look the like biggest thing I got. Um, <laughs> you know, we do, let's be honest. Yeah. It's funny, My actually. Though, are, yeah. we, got, we got a little salt and pepper action here going with the, hey. with the outfit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I like it. I like That's it. Cool. That's da, cool. da, 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 da. Ah, yeah. Um, <laughs> So, um, so how uh, how's training been going? We know you don't necessarily have a fight uh, scheduled, but you are always staying ready. So, how's that going? Um, training's been going good. I've been, um, like I said, just working a lot on my wrestling and grappling. Um, been working a bit on new some new techniques in the striking department too. Um, so not forgetting my roots, but uh, my friend and training partner is getting ready to fight uh, uh, Jenna Bishop, and she is like a world-renowned BJJ uh, competitor. She's, yeah. I think she, I forget what her like. I don't know if they keep track of records, but like she's she's um, competed against Mackenzie Darren a bunch, oh, cool. and she continued to compete after Mackenzie transition to MMA so I think she Jenna is finally ready to uh, make that jump as well and man she looks sharp so I've been training a lot with her getting my grappling a lot better at least my defensive grappling a lot better but just like trying to fend her off as much as possible but uh yeah she fights in October for LFA so I'm really excited about that and I've just been um, trying to stay in her camp and keep giving her good looks and yeah. you know being a good partner for her. So that that should be fun. So that's like whenever I don't have a fight booked, I focus on my friends. Yes, then, that's right. Another thing keeps me to is is not just me being um, you know a good friend, but also me trying to uh, you know I get to learn different techniques. I get to focus on different parts of my game that I wouldn't necessarily focus on just to give that person a different look or that person a different feel or sometimes I'm just working on something that I've never really um jumped into but I always wanted to so right now it's like submissions takedowns and stuff like that and uh yeah training training's been fun for sure cool yeah it's kind of cool to not have the pressure because obviously if you know you have a specific opponent you're like well, I know they're, you know, they're great at this. So I'm working, you know, yeah, you're, you have sort of a targeted, you Mm -hmm. know, camp or whatever, but yeah, it's kind of nice. You're just out there in your little sandbox being able to play and just do whatever you want. That's cool. Yeah. It's a little pressure and you have a bit more freedom than you have in fight camp where you're like, got to work on this one thing, you know, this one thing is going to work and you're just like doing that every day. So yeah, it's fun. Cool, 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 cool. Um, well, I um last week, and I think we're going to start doing it <clears throat> every Tuesday. Um, our good friend Hanato Laranja, um, who speaking of BJJ, twenty-seven time world champion jujitsu um coach, and you know <laughs> does seminars and things. So we got together last Tuesday and did uh, a Tuesday night festivities. So we might start doing that every Tuesday over on IG. Nice. Uh, yeah, which could be which could be kind of fun. But I know w- this is something that you and I have talked about in bringing in some guests here on what had happened was. Mm-hmm. So I'd be curious if people like who they would like to have on with us, um, who we should reach out to first and stuff like that. But yeah, I think, you know, I'm learning the tech stuff and people should also know, you know, a lot of the people know that Wade was the one who did all the tech stuff, but I'm taking over all this stuff and I have been now for quite, uh, quite some time actually. And so maybe that's why you noticed some of the tech was like a little questionable, but that's because it's been all on KV here and I'm, I'm really getting better, I think, and I'm doing my darndest. So I think that, yeah, (laughs) that things are going to be 
going uh, going going in in a great direction. And um, I have been sort of you know working on rebranding, so people might be noticing some different things and kind of less usage of the old name and some new stuff. So I just wanted to let people know to kind of stay tuned, as they say. But we are we are growing and changing. And um, <laughs> yeah, and it's like it's it's uh yeah no so it's good it's it's all good so it's fun so um and you know it's just fun kind of kind of doing some new stuff and speaking of you know playing around so um doing some stuff with with Hanato who is just hilarious and last week he literally had me in tears with his um, Scouser impression you know you and oh, I, I we did it. our best we did our <laughs> best with Molly, but yeah he he did one and it's really funny so uh, nice. so yeah. So there were no UFC fights this weekend, but there was the um, Triller event. Ooh. And we should say. A- <laughs> Is that their like opening song? <laughs> like, you know, know how. Um- <laughs> right. You know how UFC plays uh, teenage. What is it? Teenage. Right? Yeah, Baba O'Reilly. T- teenage what? Teenage, teenage uh, Wasteland. Yeah, but it's the, the song is teenage called Wasteland. Baba O'Reilly. But everybody yeah, calls it yeah. Wasteland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they um does Triller do like Triller, Triller? They should da, da, and have all the da- all the fighters in like a dance number at the beginning. Yeah, we all know the dance. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. how Tito was fighting. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, no. oh, no. So yeah, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> too, yeah, too soon. Although you know, Tito, Tito, Tito makes himself a um, an easy target for people sometimes with some of the stuff oh, he yeah. says about politics and things like that. But we're not getting into politics. Uh, it was only about about <laughs> the fight. <laughs> yeah, we don't. We try not to because <laughs> what happened was is yeah. Well, anyway. So yes, he did. Tito did get knocked out uh, by Anderson Silva, and so I, I, like you, only saw the highlights of this. But there really wasn't much of a fight to watch anyway, because I think it took eighty-one seconds or eighty-nine seconds, something like that. So less than a minute and a half. Also mm. uh, between Belfort and Holyfield, those are both quick fights, first round fights. Yeah. So based on the highlights, it looked like Tito sort of looked like he thought he was winning, and Anderson just kind of slipped, slipped, and then came up with a couple things. And uh, and shut his lights out, and Tito face planted like legit out for a while. Yeah, yeah, and I I saw a lot of people um, talking about how it kind of looked fake, like he threw the fight. Um, but if you saw the different angles, there was one angle, and I think it was the one the one that I posted on my story. I was like, oh shit! And one angle, you couldn't really see how badly he gets <laughs> it's literally like a punch to the side of his head <laughs> into the into the uh the corner of the ring it looked really bad from a from a different angle but for okay. one angle it, it looked like oh he didn't get hit that hard but then right. you see the other like two or three angles and you're like yeesh so that was a <laughs> That was a that was a brilliant knockout. Let me say that was that was really awesome to see. It looked like Tito was trying to play the volume game, and Silva was kind of taking advantage of that and just picked the perfect time to do a little roll and hook, and then punched him into the, <laughs> punched him into the ring right after and slumped him. So that was it was yeah. really cool to see. I mean. With all his antics, uh, I think a lot of people were waiting to see something like that, and we're happy that the goat could deliver. Yeah, I have nothing against Tito, as I said just a few minutes ago. I know he's an easy target for a lot of people. He's a punchline for a lot of people. (laughs) But in all the dealings I've ever had with him, he's been cool with me. So, you know, I don't I don't have any any beef with him. And, you know, I really don't whatever. That said, yeah, I don't think he threw the fight. I don't think, you know, I don't I don't I don't I don't think he would throw the fight. And I don't think that that was something that I don't think that would happen at all. I think Anderson just played it totally well. And that's, you know, he's the spider. We know him. He's got those moves. He's done that before for people. Yeah, and he's even, in the matrix. Right. And at mm-hmm. this point, they're still, they're of equivalent age, you know? And so it's going to still, right. It's a fair fight. <laughs> so it's going to work. And yeah, to me, it looked, 
it looked real, but I know what you're saying. <clears throat> the first angle that I saw, you know, you kind of were behind Spider. And so you mm -hmm. saw him, you know, doing some stuff, but then all of a sudden you just see Tito laid out. You're like, wait, what was it? You know, but mm -hmm. then you, could, you, mm -hmm. you saw the other angle and you could see what kind mm -hmm. of got in there. Like you said, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and then I, I guess there was a thing and I saw in the, because it was a sort of a call and response that Tito had said some disrespectful things talking about Anderson and his wing chung, you know, and in after in the ring, after he won the fight, Anderson said something about, you know, he wanted to show respect for martial arts and his show is mm. respect for boxing and his respect for wing chung. And it was kind of this like moment because Tito had spoken poorly about it before the fight and look what happened. It was one of those yeah. kind of things. So. So classy, so classy. Yeah. I love yeah. when you can like when someone talks some shit and you can be the classy one afterwards. Um, something uh actually no, I won't say that. Well, but it, it's always <laughs> it's always it's what's that? Tell me later, or if we ever change this to like a Patreon site, then you would really tell the other. Hey, story. yeah, I could tell other people's business. <laughs> Not gonna tell other people's business for free, no, but no, it's no. all. <laughs> yeah. But it's always nice when uh, when someone's able to kind of put out one of those moral like life lessons. If there's yeah. any kids watching, they could be like, "See, that's why I have to be classy all the time," you know. And then it's like, I don't know, it. it yeah, it's it's good. It's, it's good, good for the universe it's for good. things like that to happen. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. So <laughs> the other fight there was a Vander Holyfield and Vitor Belfort. Yeah. And this one, same thing, fast yeah. fight. This one was actually stopped on the feet, though. The ref stepped in and waved it off. And again, this one was in the first round, like I said, 81 seconds, 80-something mm -hmm. seconds. And at one point... Um, Evander had actually fallen a bit and kind of fallen through the ropes. And, mm -hmm. you know, that, that, when you see the images on the internet, if you do see those pictures, it kind of looks like that's like some winning knockout blow. Like, that's what I thought when I saw, you know, when I first saw the pictures, I was like, oh, wow, you got knocked out and like fell through the ropes. But that wasn't it. Yeah. Similar to uh, the Jake Paul, uh, Tyron Woodley. Tyron yeah. Woodley fight. Exactly. Similar. Yeah. So, so. <laughs> So Vitor wins. Evander's fifty-eight, and you know how old is Vitor right now? Forty-four, I think. I think. Uh. I think. Um, I could be wrong. I can look real quickly. Um, I think forty-four though. But that's so ridiculous. I really, I really don't like that being a thing. Yeah, that happens. You know, like it's different when when they're both in their forties, both in their fifties, even uh, forty four. Um, he Vitor's forty four. Oof. Yeah, I just I, I just don't like that, especially um, especially someone who's a legend like that, who's had such an extensive career, who's had so much so much head trauma. You know, from just being a legend and training as long as he did, fighting as long as he did, fighting the top guys as long as he did and then coming back 10 years after retiring mm -hmm. and getting punched in the head again I, I just really it leaves a really bad taste in my mouth and that's another one I didn't like seek out you know like I I, I didn't watch the Cheeto fight but I would have turned into tuned into it just because it felt like more of a fight right. for that one. I probably would have turned off the TV. I didn't watch either of them, but I'm just saying, as a as a spectator, you know, you you kind of don't want to see it to that extent because look at look at some of the greats who who did have serious head trauma, like like um, like um, Muhammad Ali, his last days. You know, like yeah. we don't want to see Holyfield look like that in his final days. And the fact that he's already proven himself and then he mm -hmm. stepped away from the game, like he doesn't need to do it anymore. He don't need to yeah. like get punched in the head anymore. So that, that really upsets me. And I, I think it upsets like most pretty much a hundred percent of boxing fans would agree. Like really didn't need to see that. Didn't need that to happen at all. Yeah. And I know a lot of people were upset because you know, when you, when you look at him, Physically, Vander looks like he's still in great shape. He looks but good. He looking, looks good. Yeah, looking good and being in fight shape, we obviously know are very different things. Yeah. But, you know, he's 
on, on the one hand, he represents really, really well for a lot of 58 year olds wish they could look like that. You know, mm -hmm. he looks amazing still. And you know, obviously he's still, you know, uh, has the knowledge of how to fight, but you know, the body and the brain, they it just can't perform like you want it to anymore. And mm -hmm. I remember going to the Tito Chuck fight, that last one, you know, um, I remember going and working the open workouts and everything. And by the way, people can see those here on my channel. I should remember what time we're saying this and put one of those things up. But uh, yeah, you can see, you know, like Chuck's open workout and Tito's open workout that was up at King's MMA at their other uh, location in Hollywood that they've actually moved from since. But um, so at the time, even for that one, we were all, I remember looking around like, these guys are a little old to be fighting. You know what I mean? And that, yeah. and that was, you know, already what, two years ago that that was Chuck and Tito mm -hmm. or whatever, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And so it's like, I don't, I don't want to be the one. Yeah. Keeping somebody from making a living, but I don't, I don't want somebody to die, you know, and it's, it's, yeah. it's something really bad can happen. And I don't think that's hyperbole to say that. No, it isn't. You could definitely young people die from okay. brain trauma, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you've already had a lifetime's worth of more than a lifetime's worth of brain trauma and you're yeah. getting it in, in, at an older age, it's really dangerous. And I'm surprised that, um, that it was allowed, but then I read that they weren't even sanctioned fights. They were all exhibition bouts. So were there medicals then? Like were, how, like these fights didn't even need to get signed off on, really? I like it, not, it's, right. it's just two people saying they'll fight each other. For well, no we know money the Florida anymore. Commission is known to be kind of wonky, you know? Yeah, but they didn't even have to get involved if it's an exhibition. Right. So, yeah, that's pretty crazy. Weird. Well, hopefully, <laughs> so I know. And the thing about it is then, so with it, with that in mind, with that all said, one would think, okay, maybe, yeah, maybe, maybe they're done now. Thanks, Tito. Thanks for playing. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, like you don't have to keep fighting anymore. Check. <laughs> but then I, apparently afterwards, he still talked about fighting more and, I don't know if called out the Paul brothers and, oh. you know, I guess that's the thing. Everybody calls it the Paul brothers now yeah. because then, you know, Vitor said something like he and Anderson could fight Jake and Logan and everybody's just trying to cash in. And, and so wow. apparently actually though, um, what's his face? Kaufman, right? Is that the guy's name that runs, uh, that runs Triller said something like, yeah, he would offer $25 million or $30 million or something like that. If they actually said yes. To which fight? To the Pauls. To the if they accepted the Vitor, uh, the Vitor. Wow, Anderson. wow! But they they kind of parted ways with Triller, right? I mean, they're I mean, now Showtime. Oh well, right. You're right. You're right. They're Showtime, but yeah. So who knows if they have a if they, they have a fight, fight contract or yeah. if they? I don't know what kind of contract they have. That'd be funny though. I, I wonder who would be the good guy in a uh, Tito versus um, one of the Paul brothers fight. I wonder who, I wonder who people would side with. Just curious. That's <laughs> a good question. Cause he both got there. <laughs> Angela, we should, here's the, be one of our isolated clips from what had happened was Angela, once again, posed the question, what is it? What if Tito and one of the Jake Paul brothers fought? Who would be the good guy? I don't know the difference between the Jake Paul brothers. <laughs> One's better than the other. That's all I know. <laughs> Logan and Jake. Um, Logan is not as good of a boxer as Jake, right? Correct? I think that's correct. Logan is the one who fought Floyd. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know that happened. It was not good. Oh, man. All right. It was a, a little exhibition thing. Same, same. Okay. Thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So I wonder who would be the good guy. I don't know. Scenario. So leave your comments and let us know who's the good guy in a Tito versus Paul brother fight. Yeah. I am actually really curious about that too, because yeah, I'm curious. I'm curious what people would think. You know, it's just funny to me that the Paul brothers now, how um, they went from, F these guys, you know, like get them out of our game and, you know, mm -hmm. we don't want them in our stuff to, okay. Yeah. Like, I mean, how can we use them? And I suppose that's a good thing, a good turn of events, right? Because the, 
the Poles are obviously just out exploiting and making a money grab anyway, too, right? So mm -hmm. why not, I guess, embrace the freak show part in the, in the, I guess it just comes down to the question of whether or not you think it takes away from our legitimacy. Well, I really feel like they've just pranked all of the combat world. Like, totally. <laughs> they, they've pranked MMA, they've pranked boxing, they've pranked, uh, they pranked Showtime, <laughs> you know, they totally. pranked all, all the fans. Uh, this is their best prank. They pranked everyone into caring about their athletic career. And, you know, I'm one of them. Now I'm like invested. Now I'm like, I want to see one of you motherfuckers get knocked out. Well, I, I definitely <laughs> do too. And that's really what they're banking on. They're banking on people wanting to see not get knocked out. But then they're also playing the other side of it where they're like, even though it could be um, lip service, they're like advocating for fighter pay. They're advocating right. for this and that. And they're trying to give fighters opportunities, like putting uh, putting the the girl fight on that last card as the co-main event. So right, they're right. so they're also playing both sides. So it's not like one dimensional. It's not just like, hey, I'm a dumb mess and I'm gonna fight people and I'm gonna say disrespectful things. Like they're actually like doing a really good job of selling themselves and making themselves interesting uh, to watch whether you hate them or not. So, um, so yeah, I think that would be an interesting fight. I, personally, I feel like if Jake Paul fought Tito Ortiz, then Jake would be a good guy in a lot of people's eyes. Like, I, I think, I think it'll be 50, 50, but I do think Jake will have a lot more people on his side than he has in his last couple of like MMA versus Jake Paul fights. Yeah, you might be right. But uh, that's just me. I mean, <laughs> I don't, but I don't know though, because Tito has a very strong, you know, Merck uh, fan base that I would think would not be fans of the sort of childish Paul brothers, you know? They, well, he has, I don't know. He's still kind of, um, he's still kind of a caricature, though. Like yeah, he, he makes the America people look bad. <laughs> I yeah, I don't know. So I don't know. It's 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 just the fact that he can't string a sentence together, you know. So he's he's always saying something that does not represent whatever he's trying to represent. Well, at least nowadays, I think he's always done that. Actually, um, I came into MMA kind of late, so right, I right. missed like well, I came in right as he was not really a right. big deal anymore. Right, but. I remember a lot of his interviews being like compiled in like YouTube right. videos. And yeah, no, that's what I was saying. One, a lot of people, yeah, since lot, it's after other just saying nonsense. Yeah, a lot of people. <laughs> he is a punchline for a lot of people. That's yeah. what I was saying. So yes, maybe, maybe there will be more people on the Paul brothers side because of, with that sentiment, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what the, the MMA said, MMA fan base says about it. But yeah, Triller is one of those things where I, I don't know how many people pay for it. It's, <laughs> you know what I mean? It seems yeah. like the whole thing is set up to be streamed and stolen. Like it doesn't oh, yeah. even, it, it, if we're being completely stereotypical and stuff like that, like, all of the stuff they show is the kind of garbage that people want to steal. Like it's like the, the literally the kind of stuff where you feel like you're like, I don't want to pay for that, but of course I want to see that freak show. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like their belt, their, their whole thing is on that. So it's just funny to me. Like, I really wonder, I mean, I guess hopefully they get paid, you know, they, people really do. Some people pay for it to buy it or whatever, but like, mm. it seems to me that the amount of illegal streams on that would be incredibly high. There has to be some kind of way to capitalize on that, though. When you're putting out a product that you know no one's going to buy, but everyone's going to see, there has to be a way. Like With the advertisers. Um, That's when they yeah. think probably all the advertisers know that, yeah, it's going to get a lot of eyeballs. 
Exactly. Like you have to count in the amount of stuff, the amount of streams that are stealing your content. And you have to factor that in and say, hey, everyone's going to see this. Everyone's going to share these clips online. Everyone's going to like yeah. screen grab it and make memes. So you should get in here, get a little spot on the ring, get a spot on the corner, you know, get a spot yep. on our fighter shorts and have a little commercial break in between because the people are going to see it. A lot of people are going to see it. So there has to be there has to be some uh pay going on i just wonder if it's sure. sustainable because it really doesn't seem sustainable it doesn't. that's what i'm saying <laughs> it does it so, but i mean maybe it is maybe maybe someone just has empty pockets and they're able to keep throwing it in until they get like this uh reoccurring I don't know, money well, coming back to uh, you just had a very funny Freudian slip there, Angela. You said maybe somebody has empty pockets. You empty say, pockets. You meant to say deep pockets. Deep pockets, but, yes. But they <laughs> actually probably do have empty pockets. Now because, they do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. So the fact that the guy at the end is all offering twenty five million dollars or whatever, yeah, it's like where's it getting where are you getting it? And now yeah. I'm starting to think I'm since MMA loves conspiracy theories so much, how about this? MMA conspiracy that tr thriller <laughs> is a money laundering scheme <laughs> and you know ah. like that the whole thing I mean I'm sorry I don't want to I'm just kidding everybody <laughs> totally kidding. Um but uh what if it is like really the whole thing is just set up and they know it's not really going to make money but like you said it's like it's there for an advertising platform or mm -hmm. it's there for you know something else where they just know that yeah but it's just like because before on the other ones they've also paid you know like Snoop and those guys a lot of money to perform right I don't I don't mm -hmm. know if they had as many performers this time but it just seems like they do spend a lot of money yeah, they spent a lot of money. And it also didn't seem like a lot of people in the crowd this time either. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I saw, I only saw a couple of clips, uh, right, like right. when they were, uh, when they did the moment of silence and yeah. it wasn't that silent, <laughs> right. but they, but they clipped to different parts of the arena and didn't, and it didn't seem like a huge crowd. Yeah. So, um, I know it's not ticket sales. I know that's not where right. the money is coming from. So it has to be something. Yeah. I really want to know. I really huh. want to huh. crack the books open. Hey, speaking really of fun. speaking of crowds, I don't know if you saw right before right before we went live tonight, folks. I saw that um our 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 Connor McGregor, our beloved Connor McGregor got into oh, no. thing with Machine Gun Kelly. He got, he got into something with him on the carpet at the um, MTV Awards. Um, Did and, he fight him? Well, it looked, it, it, based on what I could see, and I'm only gathering what I can get from really look, quickly looking at this before we went to do this, was that it, it, it and I saw, I looked at, um, on just look on TMZ or whatever, that there was some footage of him uh, kind of coming, they were both coming down the carpet, and then it looked like sort of Machine Gun Kelly and Megan, What's her face? We're in Kelly. No, well, Fox. Not Megan, Megan Fox. Yeah. Um, we're uh, Megan Kelly's also hot though, right? Megan um, that's Kelly? the black one. Isn't Megan Who's Kelly that? black? No, or no, I'm thinking of somebody else. Who's the black girl that used to be on Entourage? That foxy black, really pretty black girl that was on Entourage late in the oh, later I, in the seasons. I never watched Entourage. Anyway, <laughs> I, I thought that was her name. I can't remember. Anyway, I digress. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, supposedly, so they were there and Connor was behind and then you see them sort of have a little bit of an exchange verbally. And then all of a sudden there's like a scuffle thing. And then this one video I was watching, somebody was right, right there at the carpet. And is that your doorbell? Or yes. Um, I think the dog went outside. Oh, okay. <laughs> he knows um, how to push the door open. <laughs> okay. Well, let's make sure we know where Butcher is. He's, he's in, in the enclosed yard. Okay. <laughs> he's not okay. going anywhere. Okay. He has a... <laughs> okay. But he yeah, so good. <laughs> and so then it, it's... Yeah, so then this the, so then the, this one video I was watching, um, it's this girl had this great angle because she... Well, she was sort of behind it. And so you see the publicist quickly grabbing Machine Gun Kelly and Megan and like scurrying them away. And then 
it's really funny to me because the whole time, you know, because they are still going to be going down this carpet, the whole time Megan's standing there and there's somebody just touching her the whole time. So there's like somebody judging her hair, somebody doing this, somebody taping up her boobs, somebody doing this, somebody oh, powdering her. I see this. So, and, and, so, and she's just standing there and it's just funny. It's like, um, it just reminds me of like a, 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 you know, one of the sharks with the little remoras all around it. And it's like this oh, yeah. one, and, and it's like these things, all these little busy little things all around her. And she's just yeah. sort of standing there like this. Um, like anyway, clean my barnacles. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, if Please. anything, right. So supposedly the story that it looked like they said on TMZ was that Connor wanted a picture with him, Machine Gun Kelly, but Machine Gun Kelly denied it. And then, what? you know, and then a scuffle ensued. So I have no idea if that is true. Literally that don't quote me on this and don't, That's don't, so don't hold me to the fire. Ridiculous. But this is what I saw on, you know, TMZ as the sort of breaking story moments before we, we went live doing this. Oh my goodness. That's so silly. I think they were um, at a fight recently, like the both of them together hanging out. I'm pretty sure I saw them at a fight, like in the stands, like, oh, look who's here. Machine Gun Kelly, Megan Fox. I'm like, <laughs> like who? And, uh, oh, Megan Fox still looks exactly the same. Well, they're a couple. <laughs> yeah, those two are a couple. Yeah, yeah, but I, I, I don't know what Machine Gun Kelly looks like. He kind of looks like and, a girl, right? He's tall and blonde and skinny. And <laughs> long hair? No, it's short. Um, oh, okay. He's real thin. I must be thinking of someone else. A lot of tattoos. Um, mm. I mean, named Kelly. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, anyway, it's just that it's just ner it just ner because you know Connor does look to be on the mend quite well, right? Does look to be um, healing up well and taking his fitness well and all this, even though he's like party. You know, it's like party of the day. You know, I mean, work out in the daytime, party at night. Like his mm. his. Instagram is actually pretty funny lately if you look at it, but okay. Um, it doesn't seem like a great idea to be kind of like getting in a scuffle on an ankle that you know you're like maybe you're not even wearing a cast anymore, but like it's it's still like brand new. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like Dan Kelly, he can he can kick him in anything and <laughs> he break, I know, he shatter just, into a million pieces. I know, I know. Like, that guy looks like he hasn't drank a glass of milk in his life. Like from what I remember, I think Please. I'm thinking of you must. I, I don't think know. I'm thinking of the right person. I'm not sure. Here, I'll Google. I feel like of him right I feel now. like Megan yeah. Fox could take him. <laughs> well, yeah, For sure. yeah. I think, well, I think I think she she could take him in a leg kick battle at least. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just he needs to he needs to like chill because he's gonna break his leg again. Oh yeah, my guy needs to chill just for you know legal reasons, right. <laughs> not just physical. Reasons. This is him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of can, can kick that. He, that's, that's like a a big old human banana tree. Nothing's gonna happen <laughs> to his leg. He'll be fine. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Hopefully guess. he didn't try to like fight the security guards <laughs> no so then it takes a while so i don't know yeah i don't know um if uh what sort of the outcome was it uh was afterwards but i guess connor was there supposedly because he was going to be giving out an award or something because you know <clears throat> then of course mma twitter's all like what is what is what was he even doing there at the mma awards anyway but i guess he was supposed to give out an award or something oh what mtv awards yeah but what award would it have been i wonder i don't know best fight scene best, music maybe, video yeah. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. So in other news. Most notorious. Yes. Since there wasn't. Singer. <laughs> the most since there there yeah. weren't there weren't fights, but also in other in other sort of TMZ-ish stories, um, Jessica Andrade has been dealing with the fact that there were some nudes of hers leaked. And um she actually you know, has a, she has an OnlyFans, and mm. she's talked about OnlyFans being something for her that's been really positive, and she's been able to, like, buy a house, I think she said, or pay off her house and get one for her mom or something and really Dang, take care. of two houses. Yeah, and, you know, <laughs> like, take care of family mm. and, like, a lot of the things. And, yeah, and she was saying that, you know, it isn't just about, you know, nudes or whatever. It's personal life stuff. It's, you know, camp, it's, you know, different things, but mm -hmm. I don't know if the pictures that were leaked were from OnlyFans or were from somewhere else, but you know, some of them are definitely pretty graphic. Um, 
And she, she sort of said like, well, you know, what am I going to do about it? And you know, my, my, your body only looks good, you know, for a little while. So you may as well like celebrate it. Oh, hey oh. there. Oh, oh, thank you. You're getting beverage service. Thank you. Wow. You would walk nice. in as we're talking about OnlyFans. Like, I know. If you do this, if you ever think about it, yeah. you, you won't have that any of this coming to in to double check. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on cue. Good it's job, exactly. Adam. Good job. I won't put my ass online. <laughs> yeah. No, nor will I. Um, <laughs> people are not trying to uh, see this. Not trying to see this, um, but yeah, but so she oh, said, she, yeah, she, 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 <laughs> Ooh, she's that's good. Mm. Look at you. What Dang. is it? That's like a, a, a spicy margarita, nice mm. or mezcal margarita. Nice. Mm. Wow, yeah, sorry, OnlyFans. I'm taken. <laughs> Oh, man. But yeah, so she's she's been cool about it, and she said, you know, yeah, there's been memes made and different stuff, and she's like, yeah, whatever. And I just, I mean, I'm, I'm happy that she is taking it so well, mm. but that would be rough to have nudes leaked. I mean, that would be rough, and I know it's happened to a few fighters. So when did when did the stories come out? Because I've known about <laughs> these nudes for a while, so I'm have curious they? when the story. Uh, Say it again. I only became aware of it a few days ago. Today is Sunday, okay. right? So I only became yeah. aware of it a few days ago, but uh, so I don't really know how long it's it happened. Like how long ago it happened? So that kind of thing, because I I learned about this a long time ago, and I felt worse about it when I first heard about it than when she after she commented on it. Yeah. So I feel like whenever something like that happens, to get ahead of it and to just talk about it and put your own, I guess, uh, voice on top of mm -hmm. like the situation makes it a lot better because I felt horrible for her. Like I yeah. saw, I saw the, I saw the pictures. They're very graphic. And I was just like, ah, oh, cause I, I assumed that I at first I, I assumed it was an only fans cause I have friends in only on the only fans and you know, people will request, um certain pictures and they'll pay money for it and really? so even if it's, it's it kind of works like instagram so you have your feed that's free for people who subscribe is, but is does everybody have the same subscription rate or do you set your own rate you set your own rate so it's like an instagram feed that you have to subscribe to but then on top of that, you can ask for special content or personalized content. A champagne room? Extra. Yeah, the champagne room. You get a menu. Jessica I has her menu out, you know. Yeah. <laughs> it's really funny. So you could um, just say, I want a, like a taco shot? And you yeah, you, you send, them, uh, send them a message. You're like, hey, you mind sticking a rose in your taco and taking a photo of it? And they'll go... Five hundred dollars, <laughs> you know, and then and then you do it, and then everyone's happy. The transaction happens, but then you know, dorks who don't understand that this is for you only. It's not for you to share on your forums. Right. They'll go and share it on forums, and then it takes uh, it it um, what do you call it? It takes away the value of of right. what they're doing. Right. So. Hey, anyone on OnlyFans, don't go sharing the private content, man. This is for you and you only. You're fucking everything up for everyone else. And the prices are going to end up going up. So I'm trying right. to help you guys out. Don't share your content. Otherwise, it's going to be hard and harder to get. You're right. So when people do that, I feel bad for them. But then I also heard that it was uh, those were pictures that uh, she sent to an ex, and then the ex leaked them. So it, I don't know. There were there were a bunch of stories it out, but like I just it was just like a bunch of hearsay, you know, like a bunch of people. So I don't know what her official statement was on it, but I just I felt horrible for her because it's like whatever it was, these are private photos, and now they're out, and now everyone has seen it, including me. And you know, <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I was thinking. It's not an image I want to have in my head. <laughs> that's what I said. So I was, I didn't know. And she's such a cool girl. She's such yes. A cool no, chick. she's like I fought her, you know, and I lost her. And I know. I'm I hate sorry, everyone. But but, but, uh, but you know, she it, it isn't something I would wish on her. Even right. after all of that, you know. Yeah, yeah. She's cool, and so I didn't, I didn't really know what to expect. Uh, but I didn't expect what I saw. So, so I, I was like, 
looking at like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> um, um, and so my brain instantly went to like thinking of like a work situation and just how I would feel walking into the office if, 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 oh God forbid, like I'd be just so embarrassed to go to work if I knew yeah. my boss. Like, it's like saw. accidentally coming across your dad's dick pic. Like, you don't want that. Nobody wants that. That's not, that's not what you want to see. But then at the same time, <laughs> the image is burned into your brain. Burned. <laughs> you don't want it there, I don't but want it's it there. there. It's tattooed, right? It's so like eyes. I would just feel like that's all my boss would ever think of every time they looked at me after that. <laughs> like that, you know what I mean? Like that would be really, really hard. I would, yeah. really, I'd be really. Luckily, you know, she's a fighter and she's a badass, and and clearly doesn't seem to be worried about it. But I don't want to name name the names because. I'm not trying to bring attention to the other fighters, but I do know that it has happened to other fighters. Yeah, that they had personal pictures off oh, of yeah. their phone. That's know, why I don't use the cloud. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't I fuck the cloud. I was I I was freaking out because I couldn't take all the photos off of my phone. And people are like, use the cloud. And I'm like, fuck the cloud. No. <laughs> Too many people have been burned. But then I also think maybe. Maybe that's not how the pictures got out. You right. know, like maybe right. that was a convenient excuse. Um, because apparently it's really hard to get hacked through the cloud. Oh, but okay. at the same time, fuck the cloud. I'm really bad at not logging out of stuff. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I'm not putting anything online that uh, I might forget to log out of when I right. travel or something. Right. But I mean, we've all, you know whatsapp pictures or you know yeah. uh and so those are supposedly encrypted but i have always said that you know a strategic nip slip and can really <laughs> send a girl's career <laughs> up <laughs> way up yeah um, i kid i kid but it's hey, true. I mean, it's hey, totally true. You know hey, I mean? next ESPN show, I'll be looking yeah. out. <laughs> I'll be looking out for it, Karen. <laughs> I won't. I won't. Uh, but I, I just, I just, uh, yeah, no, I just felt bad for her. But I, um, I'm just curious. Yeah, I just wanted to bring it up just because she has really seemed to like taken the right approach to sort of dealing with it. But for sure, uh, I just feel really bad for her. Oh, like, excuse that me. Sucks. That's yeah, right. but you know, as a fighter, you have to have thick skin, especially as a female fighter. And yeah. I think she handled it perfectly. Like you said, she's just like, "Hey, it is what it is. Um, it's my body. We're fighting half naked anyway, so yeah. you know, even though it's not <laughs> what you would expect from from a uh, former champion in yeah. Drad, it's out there, and it really is like news comes in waves, so." Right. Oh, yeah. It, it appeared. Everyone's seen it. And now it's starting to fizzle away, especially now that she commented on it. So well, I feel better for her about the situation now that everything's out there and, you know, she's made her statement. And yeah, now now people can move on. <laughs> now it's no longer a big to, secret. But they're not <laughs> going to because she's fighting next month. So it's all going to come back fight week. Oh, yeah, but uh, it could help yeah. promote the fight. Who is she yeah. fighting? Cynthia Calvillo. It's a good fight. Oh, okay. Yeah. Does Calvillo have uh, OnlyFans yet? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't think so. I, think, I feel like I would have heard about that one. But there's a yeah. lot of girls who do that I didn't realize, or they have their own version of it, like their right. own personal website, like Peach right. Aunt. Um, I think uh, Mariah... Marina Moros, she has her own website too. So it's not oh, really? OnlyFans, but it's a, a, a subscription it's website. website and right. Pay to play. The, yeah, like Camilla Moros. has one. The ring girl, Camilla has one. Like a pay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Pay. yeah. yeah. Uh, and even yeah, some of the stuff on her page, you know, you can even just see it on her Instagram. It's pretty spicy. So hmm. uh, I, I kind of wonder. Um, out of all sports, out of all female sports, 
do any have as many <laughs> athletes I know, or right? fans as MMA? I wonder. I really well, do no. wonder. <laughs> I really, I really, I think probably, I mean, maybe w- does women's volleyball or something, right? Because same thing, like they already are in like really oh, tiny, maybe. they're bikini, they're in bikinis yeah. to begin with, like for work. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, and they have like great physique. So I would imagine the demand, I would imagine they would get a lot of requests. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if the soccer players get the requests. I don't know if like oh, yeah. swimmers, maybe I'm not. Curious. I don't know. I, I have curious. a feeling ours get it the most. I don't know why. Well, I, I think just... we have the most exposure for sure. Um, MMA fighters because we're on the same platform as the guys. So like when right. WNBA, when they have their games, they're not opening for the NBA. Games, You're right. You know, so. People. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> separate but equal. We're together, but but not no. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but um, no, you're right. You're right. You're right. So exposure wise, I don't know. You're right. So I'm very curious. You're right. Well, and maybe it's just um, you know something about our audience. Maybe <laughs> as it has it has more of a demand and more of an appetite. The MMA fans are hungry. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Um, okay, so this weekend we have Ryan Spann versus Anthony Smith. That's the main event. I'll be out there in Vegas working this one. And, um, you know, Anthony is currently ranked number six, I believe. Ryan Spann is number 11. And okay. Anthony beat Jimmy Crute before then. And so, you know, it is a lower, much lower ranked opponent for Anthony. But he, you know, had his title shot and then he had also lost to Rockich. And definitely needs to kind of prove himself and earn his way back type thing. And all these guys are young and hungry. We know that Span is a big dude. He's powerful. I, you know, it, it does seem like the kind of fight that Anthony should win for every reason mm. of experience and, you know, just ability and more ways to win. And I think Ryan, you know, is powerful, but I think you can kind of see some of his stuff kind of coming a little bit more. Mm. Um, he's a big guy, you know, so he's not the fastest, but, um, it's just interesting to me, you know, Anthony's a guy that's had a lot of time. He's, it's like his 52nd fight or something like that. Jeez. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And it's just interesting um, to see that he's still here. Like it is, it's just interesting to me that some fighters are able to even, you know, be out of the UFC, fight their way back and still be here and still be in contention and be sixth ranked after all this time. That's um, so cool. It's really impressive. Yeah. And um, yeah, we were talking about this just before and I didn't realize that he had left the UFC and came back like that's crazy and to have competed so well against like really high level competition um yeah he lost a couple but then he won a couple and now he's kind of building in a case for himself again he can go on a run yeah you know pretty soon like if he gets like one or two more wins he could definitely go on a title run so um so he's right there and I I really like watching him fight. Like I, I love watching him style on people. And I always feel like if you have the experience, uh-huh. um, eventually you'll get there. Like even if you've like had bad luck or yeah. if you've had like a lot of um, you know, just losses due to like inexperience mm-hmm. or or uh injury or stuff like that, or you just like fucked up if you just keep working at it then eventually you'll be able to beat everyone and yeah. anthony is a good example of that he's he's been working for so long at his craft 50 something fights that's insane and now like when he gets somebody who's lower ranked it it almost looks unfair because right. he just styles on them he just knows so much he's the guru right. you know yeah. like he's at guru level of how to win an mma fight yeah so it's really cool to watch that like it's like when you're playing a video game and you and you get to a point where you're all leveled up, uh, right. you have all the power ups, all the potions or whatever. You're just, you're just like god level. You're just like blasting through everyone with one hit, like, and that's that's kind of where he's nearing. He's nearing that god level, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. So anyone ranked ten and below, I feel like he's just gonna smash. And that's yep. the challenge for the up and comers right. to beat someone like that to show that they they have the potential to be that type of athlete. Um, so that's that's going to be a really compelling fight to watch. Well, and to your point, 
our good friend, Paul Craig, wanted to fight Anthony, and they had actually oh. both kind of talked about wanting to fight each other to see who's the best grappler in the division. Mm. Because Paul has, like, the most triangles in the division or something, and, like, you know. I would have the- to say Craig is. Yeah, but got, so I feel like the- Smith has more weapons. I feel like Smith well, has Well, right, but so if it's, so, so I actually had told them, um, you know, because I, I used to work on the Submission Underground stuff, and so I remember talking with Heather who books those fights. And I was like, yeah. ah, let's do this fight, you know, like Anthony yeah. and Paul. And so, and it's so, it's one that they, uh, like I said, both, you know, cause remember when Anthony, like you mentioned, had a couple of bumps in the road and you know, he couldn't call for like the top ranked guys anymore and stuff. And Paul was on the come up cause he's now won like five in a row or whatever. Mm. And so they, they were talking and they were like, yeah, actually that would be cool because between those two and then, um, uh, Krilov or whatever, who, who is also mm. a good grappler. Like we're, they were like, well, we're basically the three best grapplers, you know, in the division. And, you know, they're all in the top, you know, whatever, 10 ish, 15 ish or whatever. Um, and so that was kind of a, one of those storylines of who is the best grappler. And so maybe that's a fight that they would do down the road, because when you do look at it, Anthony, when you get to the top, he is the best grappler. Cause otherwise, mm. yeah, you just have strikers up there. For so, sure. um, yeah, Anthony's a big challenge for a lot of these guys. Cause like you said, he does have a lot of weapons, yeah. uh, but the other guys like have, they might have one of them and he has a lot more of a full, yeah, uh, he, he can yeah. elbow the shit out of people. He can punch him up, kick him up. Like he's, he's so good. He's a really good striker. Yeah. So, um, yeah. the fact that he has a <laughs> really good grappling too, is just a nightmare for any up and comer. Yeah. And he gets violent. Like that's the thing, you know, cause I get nervous watching my friends. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I get very stressful watching you fight all this stuff. So it's going to make me very stressful being at work and, uh, you know, watching him fight, even though I have a lot of confidence. Um, mm-hmm. But you're right. Like he it's it's cool. It is actually also cool because then I see when my friends like flip the switch. Right. And all of a sudden, like, oh. Like, He's ah, ah, ah. <laughs> like he yeah, he turns it like yeah, he turns on he turns on the uh the K beast mode. Um and um gets ready to overkill it. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, so um so yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I think that's gonna be uh it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be a lot Dope. of fun. Yeah, me too. Yep, 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 me yep, too. yep, yep. And even though I'm having a beverage. Yeah, <laughs> Mick. If you have anybody fall out of that straw we fight, let me know. We I'm hook ready. a girl up. Hook a, hook a girl up. up. Call a girl. I, I feel oh. like I'm on uh, Mick Maynard's speed dial for sure. for sure. I think I'm like at least number for three. Sure. You know. Sure. Hey, you know what? I just how far are we? Oh, we're at fifty-one. Yeah, I was gonna say we should probably wrap it up soon. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, for sure you're on there because you always <laughs> uh, show up to you know. Punks jump up to get beat down. Remember that song? You, oh. you fully like show up to just like beat some ass. And and that's the thing, you know, like um, there's a real value in that. And we've talked about this before with fighters that we know that even if they have, you know, records that don't look like amazing on paper, like everybody knows it. Like, well, F it. I still need to show up and see this person fight, right? <laughs> yeah. But nobody cares what, well, I'm saying, but nobody cares what Robbie Lawler's record is. Yeah, for sure. For I don't sure. I don't care. It's Robbie F. And Lawler. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Book him. Book him again. <laughs> book him again. <laughs> Me fighting until I'm uh, not <laughs> not um, not fifty eight. Not right. I'm gonna go for the forty four. Forty four mark. Forty four. Forty five tops. Nice. There nice. you go. Yeah. Forty five. I don't. Think yeah. So. Please don't. Please Forty six. Yeah. <laughs> nice. 44 nice. or 46. And you're going to set the record for the oldest woman competitor. Like, oh, that's God. Not a record, not a record I want you to set. That. <laughs> I know. I hate the that one. The oldest fighter on the card. On the card. I know. They'll, they'll, be like, they'll be like 28. Like, come oh, on, guys. Come on, guys. Stop making me feel like a grandma. I know. Yeah, we would every, and it's true. Every time Mari, poor bless her heart, every time Mari and Renault would fight, we'd be like, oh, the oldest woman on the roster. She's you know, so old. Like, How is she still standing and not a pile of dust? Exactly. Just blows my mind. <laughs> I was like, she looks amazing. 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 <laughs> she looks yeah. like 25. And they're like, oh, say, old. So old. So old. Give her Put a her walker. 
<laughs> How did she walk to the cage? Right. right. What a hero. Yeah. So like, old. People have seen that that uh, that Amy Schumer clip. What of the last effable day? Right. Um, and oh it's like, no! And it, no, it's funny. It's, a, it's like funny. Amy Schumer and and like um, what's her face? Um, you know who played Elaine on Seinfeld? Um, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And they're there, and they're like, and it's like they're having this picnic because it's the last day that they're effable, like that they're 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 still hot. Right. And they like they reached a certain age, and no. it's just it's like a funny skit, and, and it's That's so point funny. Here that, like Marion looks amazing. Yeah, quote, quote, for her age or for any age, and yeah, she looks people. younger than some of the g girls. They are like, oh, she's so young, and you're like, wait, how old is she? Because her face. Is so <laughs> are you sure she's twenty five? Sure? <laughs> like, like, what happened? What, what happened? What, what happened? <laughs> Road hard. We're talking about Mary Renell being old. That's right. <laughs> if you're going to talk about her being young, because that's exactly. just. Exactly. They don't add up. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, so yeah, like I said, I'm working next weekend. I don't exactly know who I'm working with. I don't remember, but um, we will be most likely doing UFC Live on ESPN2. Then we also do the pre-show, which is over on the app, ESPN Plus. And then we do a post-show. Sometimes if the, you know, we fill in for prelims and things like that too sometimes. So that is cool. a lot of fun. And as I mentioned, um, you know, I'll be doing tomorrow night over on my IG uh, Tuesday night festivities with Hanato Laranja, but you guys should know that this show, Angie and I are over on Spotify. We are on Apple podcast. We are on iHeartRadio. We are on Angie's IGTV and we are over on YouTube. So you can either type in YouTube or just type in like KarenBryant.com, And we have the information here below us and stuff like that. So yeah. Um, and, uh, I was going to say, where can they find you? But I just kind of said it just kind of, it's right there on my IG at Angie Overkill on my Twitter at Angie Overkill and on my TikTok at Overkill Hill. All right. So cool, <laughs> folks. Thanks so much for checking this out and uh, let your friends know all about it. And yes, let us know who you think is the good guy and the bad guy between uh, one of the Paul brothers and Tito. And uh, if there's some guests you would like us to have on for us to reach out to. But yeah, thanks for tuning in. Bye.